Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. When you breed multiple morph genes into the same animal, you get what's known as a designer boa. And I like to think of these animals as living works of art. Today I want to show you some of my three gene morph combo boas and discuss my future plans for breeding of these animals. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So if you want to learn all about these amazing animals, be sure to hit the subscribe button. First, I want to address a common question I get, which is how many genes should you try to put into one boa? Is there an optimal number? And this is really a matter of personal preference. But I will say that I think if you try to put too many genes into the same boa, the genes end up diluting the effects and you don't really get an optimal appearance. You know, I would say that there are a lot of two and three gene combos that look really nice, you know, where the different genes really complement each other. You might have one gene that affects the color primarily, another that affects the pattern primarily and they work well together. You know, so look at pictures online on Morph Market and other sites, see what you like and make up your own decision. I think there's even a lot of single gene animals that look really nice, like the VPIT positives. So that being said, I just want to show you some three gene visual animals. And the first is a uh, Moran Hypo Jungle Boa. And this is a beautiful animal. You know, these three genes affect both the color and the pattern and they just work really nice together. So of course, hypo, hypomelanistic, these animals have a reduced black pigment and they have a uh, thinner shadow, saddles, more of a bow tie shaped saddles. The jungle gene has a lot of effects both on the pattern and the color. You know, it can cause some aberrancies of pattern. It also causes much cleaner overall appearance with a really clean dorsal surface and uh, better color saturation. And then the uh, Moran gene is a incomplete dominant form of pastel, which affects primarily the color. You get these beautiful pastel colors. And what's really cool is you can see the cumulative effects of these three genes on the color of this animal. This animal has some really beautiful orangey brownish color on her sides. Not really brownish, more of kind of a orangey, but there's definitely also a purplish lilac tint to it. It's kind of a hard color to describe, so hopefully you can see there. Um, the saddles you can see are reduced due to both the hypo and the jungle gene. And this animal just has a really high color saturation, a really clean overall look. You know, those three genes definitely work well together to enhance the color of this animal. And so hypo and jungle, of course, are two of the most common morphs you see in boas. The Moran gene is a little bit rarer, and I think it's definitely an underrated gene. You know, most pastel boas, are, they become pastel with multiple genes. It's more of a selectively bred, line bred trait. Whereas the Moran is incomplete dominant. So if an animal has one copy of the Moran gene, it has a pastel appearance with a lot of pinks and purples and you know enhanced color. If it has two copies, it has this really amazing looking super Moran appearance. It's this kind of deep, dark, bright red color. Um, so this particular female is a four-year-old, 2017 born baby. And my thoughts with her is I'm going to cross her with my VPIT positive male. And so then I'll have hats. So these three genes are all um, incomplete dominant. So I will have some F1 animals, which are the same. They're hypo moron jungles, just all inherited from this female. My, my male is just the VPIT positive, but they will also be het for VPIT positive. So then I can cross those animals with each other. My goal is to produce a Moran VPIT positive jungle boa, which actually will have four genes, Moran, hypo, VPIT positive, and jungle. And that should be an amazing looking animal. I've seen some pictures of Moran VPIT positive animals, and they have almost this incandescent look to them. They look like a uh, orange light bulb that just glows. So adding in the jungle and the uh, Hypo in there as well should be just kind of off the charts. So looking forward to that project. Of course, I'll also have all the possible combos with, you know, one or two genes in addition to the VPIT positive. So hopefully a lot of interesting animals will come out of that project in the years ahead. This next three gene animal is only one gene different from the female I just showed you. This is an IMG hypo jungle. And so, Hypo and jungle, same as the same genes as the animal we just saw. 
but in addition the IMG gene, the increasing melanin gene. And IMG is a really cool gene, it's one of my favorites, it's a super popular gene. And what happens is the animals start off relatively light, but with each shed they gain more melanin pigment. You know, and some of them turn almost pure black as adults. This female, because she has the modulating effects of the hypo in the jungle, she's not going to be pure black. But you can see she's got some really light areas from the jungle gene and also a lot of this dark pigment and flecking. Just a really beautiful look. Uh, she has, has an especially beautiful head because she's got these uh, specks of dark pigment, but she's got these really beautiful golden eyes that just really stand out. Something about IMG, they have really beautiful head markings. And so this particular animal is also has a 66 or 2 out of 3 chance of being het for the VPIT positive albino. So this particular one I'm planning on breeding to my VPI male. And you know, with any luck, I'll have some uh, IMG VPI T positive junglos. If she doesn't turn out to be het, then I'll have hets from that crossing, and I can cross those to get that um, that morph, the VPI T positive IMG junglo. I hope I said that correctly. Um, but this one is she's only about two years old. This is a 2019, so you know, a few years ahead just to get her up to size. But looking forward to seeing where this project leads um, when I cross in the VPI with the IMG and the jungle and the hypo. This third designer boa is still just one gene away from the first two. So like the first two, this animal has visual for the incomplete dominant jungle and hypo genes. But this animal also has the recessive Carl albino mutation. And when you mix together any albino plus hypo plus jungle, you get something called a junglo, also known as a jungle sunglo. The sunglo is just the hypo and the albino without the jungle. But as you can see, these three genes together have a really spectacular effect. And one downside with albino boas is the colors tend to get kind of washed out, especially with the call strain. And as they age, the color just kind of washes out to this kind of pale yellowish color. You know, not really very impressive. So people figured out early on that if you bred in the hypo gene, that would really enhance the color saturation. It cleans up the pattern, enhances the colors. But then if you add in the jungle on top of it, that, it just kind of takes it to another level. And so you can see this particular animal. This is a three-year-old female. You can see she's got, got this intense, almost neon orange look to her. She's got some really beautiful head markings with a lot of orange on her head. You can see looking how, at her back, how clean it is. The jungle just really cleans up the back, the pattern on the back. And then looking at her sides, you can see it's kind of a different shade. It's more of a pink and red, whereas the back is kind of more of a bright yellow. Just really gorgeous looking animal. And so this particular animal is also from a selectively bred albino, cow albino bloodline known as the lipstick line. And the lipstick line was selectively bred to clean up the color just, you know, as an albino by itself. So when you add it together with the other genes, you just get this really beautiful effect. This particular animal was produced by Peter Messry of Motion uh, Reptiles, who's a you know, really highly recommended morph breeder. He's got a lot of really beautiful animals. And just really love how this animal is developing. She actually seems to be getting brighter with age. You know, unlike some of the calls that kind of dull out with age, she's just looking better and better. And so this particular animal, she'll probably be ready to breed in another two to three years. And I think I'm gonna cross her with an animal, which I'll show you uh, at the end of this video. This fourth three gene animal, like the first three I showed you, also has the jungle and the hypo gene. But this one differs as far as the type of albino. And this is yet another type of uh, junglo boa. And as I mentioned, you can take any kind of albino T negative, like the call or sharp, or T positive, like the VPI, uh, boa woman caramel, Russian T positive, you know, and there's several other types of T positives. But if you combine an albino with a hypo, and with the jungle gene, you get a junglo boa. And this particular one is a VPI T positive junglo boa, or VPI uh, sunglo boa. Jungle sunglo, that is. 
And so you can see that this animal superficially resembles the cow jungle I showed you. But if you look at her colors, they're definitely darker. She's got more kind of a rose color, more of a reddish color. You know, her the, the background color is a little darker, maybe not quite as bright. Um, but she's got these really beautiful, you know, reddish rose uh, saddle markings. You can see the the dorsal surface is cleaner from the jungle boa, but the VPI, since it's a T positive albino, you still do have a little bit of dark pigment. So you can see she's got these speckles, you know, unlike my call John Glow. Um, and the speckles seem to become more, a little more pronounced with age, but it's kind of a cool feature of these VPI T positives. You know, why I really uh, was attracted to this animal, I really like her pattern. And you know, the jungle gene is very heterogeneous and it can cause a lot of different pattern aberrancies. Some of them don't really have any pattern aberrancies. Some of them just have this stripe. But this particular one, you can see she's got these connected saddles, which form kind of a chain. I don't know if you can see, you know, and these saddles on her neck. And then her saddles have this really geometric shape to them. They're kind of um, like four pointed stars. And I don't know if that's a parallelogram or trapezoid or whatever the geometric term is, but she's got these really unusual saddles. And I really like that because it looks kind of geometric and it's just, you know, I think it's a really cool look. And so this particular animal, I'm going to breed to my T positive male, you know, just to continue these beautiful uh, VPIT positive jungles, junglo boas. This is the last three gene morph boa I'm gonna show you today. And unlike the previous four, this one does not carry the jungle gene. And this one is not a female. This is the only male I'm gonna show you today. And this is the youngest one. And this is the re most recent morph boa I picked up and possibly the last, you know, since I'm not really acquiring boas anymore you know, famous less words. But this particular animal, I've been looking for one of these for a long time just because it's so impressive. This is called a moon glow. And the moon glow is a three gene combo, including the call albino with the anorethristic gene and the hypo gene. The albino, which is technically amelanistic, removes the dark melanin pigment. The anorethristic removes the red and orange pigment. And then the hypo, further causes reductions in the dark pigment, the distribution of the dark pigment, as well as the pattern. And this is what it looks like. And so I showed you some jungle sun glows, and you know, I think they came up with the sun glow term because those sun glow and jungle sun glow boas have kind of a bright orange, uh, yellow color like the sun, versus this moon glow, they start off kind of a pale, creamy white, and then as they age, they get this kind of uh, very extremely pale yellow glow to them, just like the moon. It looks kind of like the moonlight on the night of a full moon. Really cool looking animal. And so you might say, well, what does the hypo do? I mean, you could take an amelanistic and an anorethristic boa. You know, those two genes together, you get called, something called the snow. And the snow has kind of a dirty off-white color. But when you add in the hypo on top of the two other genes, it just cleans it up quite a bit. And the saddles have this glowing lilac, almost translucent appearance. It's a really cool gene. This animal also has really cool eyes. He's got like these white eyes, or you know, very, actually they're really, really pale lilac color and a pink tongue. Just cool look overall. And so the moon glow, I know I've been looking for one of these for quite a while. And it's weird because the prices, of course, started off sky high like 10, 15 years ago when they first became available. But then they steadily dropped. And, you know, a few years ago they reached somewhere around six to $700 a piece, which it seems to be that was the, the cheapest you can get them because the prices have been going up quite a bit in the last couple of years. Now, last time I looked on Morph Market, the going rate for one of these was about twelve to fifteen hundred dollars. So, not all morphs, you know, perpetually drop in price. Sometimes they go back up. We'll just have to see where the prices go. That you know, the hurt market has just been crazy lately. People just seem to want to get into all kinds of different reptiles, and the prices seem to be going up across the board on a lot of different herbs, you know, which is a topic for a future episode of the Brian Boas Show. 
So that was a look at some of my three gene morphs. I hope this was helpful and somewhat entertaining. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me by social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.